Hello and welcome back to Julia's Time Out. You're here in uh, Southern Thailand in Koh Samui Island. And I'm all checked into the Wellness Center where I'll be for the next 22 days. This is where I'm probably gonna be filming any videos where I'm inside. Um, I tried to move around and find that I have a pretty picture. I have some pretty things, but I have to use a refrigerator to hold my, <laughs> to hold my phone at the right height for when I need to take the video. And the lighting's pretty good too. It's a lot warmer than the other, other place. So I think this is kind of gonna be, if I'm taking any videos inside, um, this is probably what you're gonna be seeing is my fan in the background, my door, and some little like fairy lights over my bed but it's not bad I can't complain I feel a little bit today like I just checked myself I've never been in rehab of any kind but the fact that I'm here for a purpose um, to not just detox uh, myself and get in better health and you know there's a variety of activities that are scheduled and everything is really optional here I mean you have to decide if you're gonna spend the money are you gonna go all in and take advantage of it the property is absolutely beautiful today is Sunday and that's when they do check-ins everybody checks in on Sunday um, so whether you're uh, leaving after your period of time or whether you're coming. So today I heard that there's, including me, there is 10 more plus me, 11 new people that are starting this Sunday. And then there's a handful of people that are staying over. It's raining today, so I hope to be able to get out sometime tomorrow if the weather's a little bit nicer and be able to walk the property once I've learned it. I really just checked in, had lunch got into my room and have really got myself settled because it's actually gonna be really nice to be kind of settled for the next 22 days where I can kind of unpack and know that I don't need to pack everything up um, in the next couple of days and move on. So that's, that's a nice break from what I've been doing. I can't believe that I've been in Thailand now. It's almost four weeks. It's gonna be four weeks in the next um, two days since I left home. So that's been crazy. Three and a half weeks I've been in Thailand now. Um, so my purpose for this video today is that I had a subscriber and I'm just going to use her first name, Mary, and she asked me a question if I would be willing to do a video on surviving the death of a loved one or the death of a marriage. And so when I was downstairs waiting for my room to get ready, cause I had to check out a one down the island, check in, I had a couple hours. And when I was downstairs, I decided that I was gonna make that video today because I have a few hours before dinner and I wanted to jot down what I was gonna say because I feel like a lot of people deal with this. And I feel like that when you're going to speak on behalf of this, that the emotions tend to creep in and kind of skew the message sometimes, whether the, you know, you're crying, whether you're reliving memories, and it's really hard to be clear and concise about the message that you want to deliver. So Mary, this video is for you, and I wanted you to know that I actually took some time to really think about what I was willing to share on a personal level and the things that I found that helped me. Now, I'm just gonna make a disclaimer really quick. I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counselor. I'm just a person that has been on this planet now for over 54 and a half years. And I was really lucky until the last few years where I hadn't lost a lot of people that were really close to me, but that all changed at the end of 2020. And we all know what was going on in 2020, so that just kind of compounded the issue. So please forgive me that I have written some things down and I will be referring to them, but I really just want to make sure that I get this message, that I get it right. And I really hope that it will help if you're dealing with you know, the loss of a loved one in any capacity, it could be death or otherwise, or um, the marriage. And um, so first, I wanna just say that I've said some of the things that I've already had notes, so it's actually pretty good that, it, that I wrote it down because I think that it actually sticks in my brain. That's just the way that I learn is, is writing things down and doing things over. But you know, losing, somebody to death for whatever reason and having a marriage end are really kind of the same thing. They're really similar. They're big losses, especially if you've been married to somebody for a very long time. Because if somebody passes away, 
it's typically they were in some type of pain and you feel like they moved on to a better place. With a spouse that's moved on, their their physical presence is still there, whether it's, you know, it's 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 still physically there on earth. They're still there. And um so ironically we tend to forget that both are very similar in ways and the grieving process has to be similar in different ways right just because one person's physical presence is not there and what it is it's still a very significant loss in your life so i want to start this video now um, by getting a little bit up close and personal which is something that i never thought that i would do on the internet <laughs> um, but here i am and I think that it's really important because when I've gone through some things over the last few years, believe it or not, things that I've read, blogs, vlogs, um, Facebook groups that I've joined have really helped me um, through some tough times. So my real life changing journey just started really happening over four years ago where I kind of like went into a tailspin. And that was during 2020, and we all know what was going on in 2020, right? When the world became very, very different um, than what it was after that. And we all had significant life changes, all of us. They were different, some were similar, but we all were impacted by that, um, no less. And it was a really crazy time in the world. But little did I know how tragic that it would be for me and my family as that year continued to progress. So the first thing that happened that year was in uh, in December, my sister-in-law had been battling cancer for years and she passed away two days before Christmas. And so I had never really been there by somebody's side for days or weeks as they tra tra transitioned into, you know, the next phase of whatever you believe in and whatever happens to us when we leave this planet. But you know, it's, it's pretty, um, I don't know how any normal person, um, you know, is not impacted by watching somebody transition off of this planet and into another space and take their last breath here on earth. I just don't know how anybody cannot, that cannot just have a significant impact on them um, that they'll carry for a lifetime. You know, about 10 days after she passed away, and of course it's the holidays and the world is nuts. I mean, to say the least, we'll never hopefully in my lifetime see anything that crazy again. But my mother-in-law had bat been battling lung cancer and her lung cancer returned on the other side. And at that time she lived 3,000 miles away. So I decided, I made a flight to go out there and I actually decided to move it and go out there sooner. And about three days after I got there, she passed away. And it was incredibly difficult. It was the beginning of 2021. And so services for anything, anything that you needed medically or health wise was just ridiculous to get. So that was, that was a struggle. That was a real struggle. And again, I found by myself, you know, once again, just six weeks later, you know, caring for someone as they transitioned into the next phase of their existence and watched her take her last breath. So in a six weeks period, in a six week period of time, I had handheld two loved ones as they left us and um, and moved on to a better place. It was a better place because both of these women were suffering and had been suffering. So as hard as it is for us here, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a bittersweet, and it, but it still doesn't make the grieving process any either, easier. I felt like at that point, like I really hadn't had a chance to grieve one before I was in the process of another one. And it was just compounded back to back and then with everything that was going on made it worse. So I'm 3,000 miles away from home and I get a call that my brother, who had just lost his wife, had a massive heart attack. He was okay, um, but you know, I was far away. And so I ended up flying back home and staying with him for a month just to make sure he was on the mend and, and all of that stuff and that he wasn't alone. So when I am asked, how are you grieved during this period? 
I didn't even really have time to grieve during all of these things that were going on because it just seemed like things were happening one after another. So I really believe that all of this tragedy in such a short period of time really changed my perspective on life. I think sometimes when it's a one-off, you kind of like you get through that moment and you move on and life goes on. But I feel like when it's like it, it hits you, hits you, hits you, hits you, it just really, really, really starts to make you look at and reflect on everything around you. And my perspective of life changed in a radical way. I just watched two people pass away from cancer, almost lost a third family member while at the same time the world was completely shut down. That being said, and I do apologize, I'm reading right now, perspective is a power, is very powerful. The perspective that you have and the way that you see things in life, outside in the world, when you look at people that you love, when you walk down the street, when you're watching a bird singing in a tree, it's a very powerful gift that we're all giving. And how you choose to view things, stress about things, love things, can either fuel you in a positive or a negative way. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to lie. For a while, I was fueled in a negative way. I went down a deep, dark rabbit hole for quite some time. That much trauma in such a short period of time will throw anyone into somewhat of a tizzy. So to sum things up, it was hard and it sucked. It just plain sucked, but it changed me dramatically. I don't know if everybody that knows me, loves me, cares about me will think maybe that the way that I changed was the best for them. But for me, it has been, for be it has been better, significantly better than where I was. The day-to-day -day started to seem mundane and insignificant. Cooking, shopping, cleaning, running here, running there. It all just seemed pointless after what I had gone through. And I mean, you know, who wouldn't kind of have that perspective after, after going through and seeing and living through those experiences? I don't know how you would come out the other end the same. And I realized that I needed something more. I needed something more out of life. I was a half, more than a half a century old and I kind of been on this just hamster wheel of life for so long, as long as I can possibly remember. So simply put, there just had to be something more in life that was more meaningful than that. So what did I start doing? What is, what do I, how do you grieve? How do you get over losing a loved one? How do you get over, um, you know, if you have a marriage breakup, how do you losing your best friend, whatever. They're all losses that we suffer, right? And they do impact us. And we have two choices. We can continue doing things, living things, thinking things, have that same perspective that we've always been, but now that person's been removed. So it makes it difficult. It's changed the dynamic of what we've known or we need to start to change our perspective a little bit and how we view things. And sometimes that can be just the littlest tiny thing. It doesn't need to be any of the choices that I've made. Hiking out in the woods for hundreds of miles, um, you know, traveling the world. It doesn't need to be that quote radical. It's called radical once. It doesn't need to be that radical. What did I do? Before I got to that place, I started meditating. I really needed to start to settle down my spirit and soul. I started doing yoga, easy yoga. You can tell I'm not a yogi. And I started really craving peace and solitude. I spent time in nature and just noticing the little things, the, the bird singing, the leaves rustling, the squirrel running around. I would just sit there for hours, no book, no phone, no nothing. And it just brought me a sense of peace and calm that I really, really needed at that point. And then I switched over and started to watch YouTube videos of Master Shin Lee, David Goggins, Muji, and Sadhguru are the four that I probably tuned into the most. 
And depending on my mood for the day, did I need like David Goggins kicking me in the butt? Or I didn't, did I need Master Shin Lee just like kind of using the, uh, you know, the common sense thing? Or Sad Guru, you know, he has such a, he ha and I'll link all of these in the description. He has such a, a comedy of errors and the way to look at life that we make, tend to make so difficult sometimes. And then Muji, a lot of times with the meditation, I really enjoy that. And I decided that like, I've been waiting for so long to like, just really like spread my wings and fly. And I just decided one day that I just, I couldn't wait anymore that I needed to do it because I just needed to do it. I needed to do it if I was gonna survive mentally and emotionally. So in 2023 and in 2024, I attempted to hike 2,200 miles on the Appalachian Trail. Both times I did not make it to the end, but the, the time that I was on trail, the time that I was off trail in the towns, the people that I met, and all of the experiences combined changed me for the rest of my life. And those videos are still uploaded on my channel, so go back and see them. The ones from 2023 and 2024 are still uploaded on my channel if you want to go back and see, or if you want to do a hike, there's prep videos on there as well, too, if you just need to get out in nature for a day or a week. So I am no expert on grieving, but what I can suggest is to take that grief and use that energy to pursue something that makes your heart smile from the inside out try new things and get out of that small box that you've been living in for so many years. The only way to move past the grief is to move forward and it doesn't need to be complicated. Get a new hobby, make a new friend, cook a different meal, volunteer, take a holiday somewhere, somewhere you, that you've always wanted to go or have never been, somewhere where it's new and fresh Redecorate your whole house, redecorate a room, buy a new bedspread, get a massage. <laughs> you know, me and my massages here in Thailand. And if you keep moving forward, if you can actively continue to move forward and have things to look forward to, then it's really hard to keep looking backwards. So though that's just my opinion, that's just my experience. I really hope that it makes sense. Thank you for being patient with me for writing it down, but I really felt like I had some really great things when I jotted it down and I wanted to make sure that I was able to make those points. I hope that this video helps anybody out there that is struggling because what has brought me here to where I'm at right now, and you see me running around Thailand and hanging out with the elephants and, and coming here to basically kick my own ass and hiking in nature and all of these great things, it was a struggle for me to get to this place. I didn't just wake up one day and just be like, I'm gonna travel the world. So I would love to know in the comments, if you've experienced grief, how, grief, how did you process it? What did you do to heal from it? And if you have a free moment, please, I'm gonna say the thing, like the video. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, I am here 22 days. I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited to see the change um, that I'm gonna have over the next 22 days of detoxing. At 5.30 we have dinner tonight and then at seven we have a, um, a, the bowl, uh, a bowl sound bath, sound bath event. And then tomorrow morning starts the hike. Tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. on Monday, Monday through Saturday, and Sunday's a day of rest. So it'll be exciting. And I really hope to bring you a lot of great videos. And I hope that <laughs> I'm taking up less of the screen <laughs> as the next 22 days goes on. All right, everybody, take care. Have a great day. Peace.